Yo, C-Mask content viewers. It's Friday morning, and that means that Will and Mike and myself and Nick, all, all guys with eyes in their name, that, that's interesting, isn't it, are, are supposed to be here. Nick is, of course, running around. He's been in like four or five states in seven days making this, this documentary he and I are working on. We've been calling it affectionately What a Woman Is. Might, might debut with a different title, but that is apropos because the biggest story of the year, culturally speaking, in an election year in America, which no one cares about, is Harrison Butker's speech at Benedictine College from last week. I've spoken to Harrison and his uh, manager yeah, a couple times this week. It is simply humongous. If you search Twitter, it's all anyone is talking about. Politicians are talking about it. Obviously, the, the right-wing commentary is talking about it. Other sports stars are talking about it. Kansas City chief teammates of Butker are either taking a side or throwing him under the bus. Pat Mahomes says, I barely even talked to him. But um, he has some teammates that have really come out in favor of him. Mike and Will, we don't, we're Nicholas today, but you guys are each in foreign countries. What what are you hearing in England and Canada, respectively, about this? It's mainly on the internet, right? I mean, it's a it's a huge rage even over here. I mean, uh, it, it's it's all um, you can see on Twitter, on Instagram, on on YouTube. And it's interesting. We were talking about it before we hit record. Uh, you can't actually find the full clip of the whole speech anywhere. Really. There was one guy that posted an unedited version on Twitter. I have to I have to dig it up, but yeah, you know, my, my wife isn't so plugged in with what's going on uh, culturally. And even, even she was like, man, did you hear about this, this, this speech? I'm like, Oh yeah, we're actually talking about it on C mask tomorrow. So it's huge. He didn't just like poke the belly of the beast. He gave it a swift kick to the nuts, and we're seeing the you know, the, the backlash now. Did you guys see that uh, interview, Whoopi Goldberg on The View? And apparently yes. uh, traditional Catholics are an extreme extremist religious group. It's the first day of – that's the first time I've ever heard that. <laughs> Did you see that, Will? Whoopi Goldberg was defending us against – some blonde bimbo. I think I have that sound clip. I can I can play it in a second as well. But um, did you? What have you seen from across the pond? Well, you're a little further away. There's headlines in the UK press about Harrison's speech, mostly about how various people are slamming him for it and how it was controversial and who raised this guy. How did he get these views? This is so offensive and unsettling. So, I guess that the general reaction here is pretty similar to what you're getting in the U S and in Canada as well. And there, there aren't too many mainstream media outlets who are saying that he said a bunch of good stuff in the speech. Most people are hostile to it. Okay. What, let me, let me play you. It's not the full thing, but let me play you the relevant clip. And I want to talk afterwards about what I mean by the relevant clip. It's a 20 minute, it's a 20 minute speech. Tell me if you guys can hear this. How many of you are sitting here now about to cross this stage? And are All right, let me start it from here. Because I think it is you, the women, who have had the most diabolical lies told to you. How many of you are sitting here now about to cross this stage and are thinking about all the promotions and titles you are going to get in your career? Some of you may go on to lead successful careers in the world, but I would venture to guess that the majority of you are most excited about your marriage and the children you will bring into this world. I can tell you that my beautiful wife, Isabel, would be the first to say that her life truly started when she began living in her vocation as a wife and as a mother. I'm on this stage today and able to be the man I am because I have a wife who leans into her vocation. Okay, so now, Will and Mike, neither of you have heard the entire speech. I don't think I've heard the entire speech. It's it's a 20-minute talk, but bear in mind, just you guys react to this. See if this doesn't show with market testing, market research, exactly what 
pretty much this show and this show alone and its individual constituent constituents, Will in his private capacity, me and my private capacity, Nick, Mike, have been saying, and no one else, this speech included elements of criticism for President Joe Biden, elements of criticism for Pride Month, broader elements of criticism for LMNOPQ+, broader elements of criticism for surrogacy, broader elements of criticism for um, the new anti-Semitism law uh, going going through both houses of Congress. What else? He, he touched all this stuff. Have you heard word one about any of these other quote-unquote hot-button issues? Because, see, the CMAS crew, you, you two gents, me and Nick, have been the ones telling our growing but small audience that the issue of all issues is women need to return to their place, kill feminism, patriarchy is back. That that's all anyone's talked about in my neck of the in America. How about how about you, Will? I haven't heard anything. If I'm checking the headlines here as well, there's zero attention paid to any of that other stuff. It's all about what he said about women. So that tells us that you get the flack when you're over the target. I lost my job for a defense of patriarchy. And you know from that reaction that this is that sensitive topic that they do not want people going after. Because like Herbert Marcuse said, feminism is the real core of the radical movement. Everything's downstream from that. It just goes to show you how utterly debased and reprobate our society has become where these objective truths. And to me, like this wasn't even very controversial. I mean, to us guys, right? I mean, we're a very small corner of the Internet. Um, this is just called being normal. <laughs> and it, it's great. And he said it with such tact. And I would say respect while still maintaining boldness and conviction. There's nothing I, I could perceive as offensive, but we know the radical left and that the collective liberal hive mind disease obviously uh, takes offense to anything uh, involving the structure that our Lord gave us, the patriarchal structure. And I'm also, I mean, not just that, it's very strange to me that even in, you know, Catholic Christian circles on YouTube and on the internet as a whole, this is a very unpopular topic. People really want to uh, altogether avoid Ephesians 5 and what St. Paul speaks about in terms of, you know, the marital dynamic and, um, the marital debt and everything. And I, I, I mean, I can understand why I just, I, I, sometimes I still, it, is it still baffling to you, Tim? I know you've been kind of the front line of this patriarchy topic for, for years. I mean, starting at least back since what, 2016, 2017, before this word even really came in, in vogue. Um, I don't understand why there aren't more, even, especially trad cats. How LARPy are you? You go to traditional Latin mass, your wife wears a veil, but she runs the show. All too common, many such cases. It's according to Father Ripper, Ripperger, uh, eighty percent of trad families. I would say that's. Yeah, I mean, he 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 knows, but I would say that that undercuts it. It's like ninety five per ninety eight percent of even trad families are are matriarchies, even though they're wearing the veils. The veils represent veiled headship. Uh, Saint Paul says it's a sin for a man to veil his headship. That's why he can't veil. The trad families will do that, and they go to the right liturgy, which in I think all of our view is the TLM or whatever. But they're not they're not living the right way. Um, I yes, I so I go back to the twenty teens. I go back to twenty nineteen when I announced on Matt Frad's show that I'm writing this book, summer of twenty nineteen. That was I think his largest viewed show ever at that point because I was still on Taylor Marshall's channel and his channel was small. I think the morning I did Matt Frad show, I got to the studio and he either crossed 27,000 subs or 37,000. Can you believe that? And he was just thrilled to have me on. And he knew it was going to be a big show because TNT, you know, me and me and Marshall were all the rage at the time. And um, we did just a kind of general, what are all your projects, Tim show? And I said, well, I'm, I'm writing this book. Um, at, at the time, my, my brother was co-author against feminism. And 
then I told some some stories about how out of control women were. I'd just come from Disney World. That that set off his audience, but it was his, I think, his widest viewed show at the time. And he'd he'd been on the internet forever. Two months later, Trent Horn, who was a friend of Matt's, had seen what I said about women broadly. And he challenged me to basically a debate. So I went into the studio in San Diego and debated him on two things, back to back. It was like two two two-hour debates, Um, one on feminism. Trent is a Christian feminist. And the other one was on the death penalty. Trent dislikes the death penalty because Francis does. So that wasn't a good day for him. But so both of those things happened in late summer, early fall of 2019. And it was all a kind of announcement tour of the fact that I'd begun writing this book which was done in 2020, but ended up coming out in 2021. You guys both know it now under a different title than it originally was. It's the case for patriarchy. Let me say this to to some of Will's comments. Alfred North Whitehead said, we properly assess an age, not by its suppositions, but by its presuppositions. So dig this. I think that this is the best expositor of Whitehead's idea I've ever seen. Just regarding all of the butker topics of the day. Uh, um, abortion. That's a supposition of the age. Oh, are you left or right? What's your position on abortion? LGB. That's a supposition that's downstream of feminism. T, you know, the T in LGBT supposition because it's all about gender dysphoria right the original gender dysphoria is what we're presupposing uh surrogacy that's a supposition and and then a couple of the other issues crit- critical race type issues are actually run by feminists as well but the presupposition that we should judge the age by is what underlies all of those and it's all the original gender dysphoria feminism what, what do you what do you think about that? I think it's a really powerful expositor of that that a white heady end notion, right? And it's exactly how revolutions unfold, because they'll push for something, make it a talking point, and then in the background, the real territory that they want to claim becomes solidified beyond question. So if you get yes. everyone talking about whether um, gay marriage, for example is a thing in the background the idea that people can uh, have sex before marriage or that people get divorced all of that that just becomes beyond question so it's a way of just using smoke screens so that the actual thing that you want to infiltrate society with is untouchable and when you touch it which is what we're doing on this show saying hold on a minute guys you've snuck feminism in here Let's talk about that because that's problem number one. Then you get this reaction. That's right. And at the core of it is a hatred of God and the hatred of the family because the family represents God and marriage represents the Christ and the church. It's pretty simple. Right. You can see those with eyes to see and hearts to, to understand and discern. It's very, very clear. And that's why this topic is so important. And that's why I'm just like, at this point, it's almost like righteous indignation, why uh, there aren't more people in the faith circles speaking about it, where there's like this profound support of feminism in the 99. I mean, I was listening to, and I love Dr. Scott Hahn. I, 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 I love him. But I remember him saying, you know, show your children how unworthy you are of your wife. And you're like, what are you talking about, bro? What? This like, you know, again, we, we talked about it last episode too, the Schmitzian like, oh yeah, it's complimentary and eve was taken out of adam's rib to stand side by side with him you're like dude do you guys even read your bibles i don't know man i uh i'm i'm, I'm getting fed up with the bullshit well paradise wait you was said patriarchal right and adam named eve there's patriarchy even in paradise mm-hmm. gotta say that to these guys they need to know it and tim it's funny that you mentioned this all starting back 2018 2019 it's weird to me remembering how i would sometimes come home from work just to grab a quick bite to eat before going out to do some sports coaching and my wife would be listening to you and taylor marshall and i never had time to listen probably but she would said like oh you you like this younger one he, you know he talks about aristotle some of the stuff that you talk about too and then <laughs> lo and behold a couple of years later ended up getting connected to you via dr michael robillard now doing this show 
it's just funny how things work out. Reminded me of that when you were just describing that. I never knew that. You've never told me that. That that's cool that she said you you like this this younger one. Um, yeah, and it's <laughs> funny because because now like what I was gonna say to Mike that's relevant to what you just said is Mike said something like, "Oh yeah, the, the people like us, the fellow travelers." There, I'm not trying to just be grabby. There are no fellow travelers the, b- besides Mike, Will, Nick. Um, I, I would I would lump in. Dr. Robillard and, and, and Elliot uh, Hulse as well. God bless those two uh, C-Mask alum. But I mean, I know they agree, but there are none. Like I, I want to address an aspect of even, even Harrison's speech um, after this. And I mean, Harrison's a friend. Harrison's been a friend of mine since uh, also TNT. He and his wife were fans, and and uh, I interact with his wife more on Twitter than Harrison. He he keeps his Twitter really really clean, which means not interacting with pages like mine. But we talk behind the scenes. He called me the morning after this happened. I talked to his business partner yesterday. I, I want to address something about the speech also, but because Mike or Will mentioned um, the view and and what kind of topsy turvy world we're living in, such that. Whoopi Goldberg had to defend traditional Catholics. I, I just I wanted I wanted to play it for y'all if if that's cool. Listen. Um agree with you and I disagree with you. So, oh. so I agree with you that freedom in the spirit of freedom of speech, I don't want people shut down or fired for things. I don't know this lady's name. I'm looking for it in the subtitles. It's just the blonde, blonde, thin, kind of kind of older lady I, I can't really see here but but it's it's a blonde thin lady if anyone knows who that is on the view i i'm not a viewer um and and Whoopi goldberg and she's she's gonna basically defend liberal protestantism and say this is the only acceptable form of christianity and um she wants to say out both sides of her mouth that she likes freedom of speech but harrison should have shut up and Whoopi goldberg of all people is like what you can't say that willing to say. I will break with you on the comparison to Colin Kaepernick for this reason. Colin Kaepernick was standing up for the rights of many and saying in a social justice moment, this is a reminder that we're not there yet. What this man is doing is not just a devout Catholic. This is um, someone who's practicing something called the traditional Latin yes. mass, yes. which is a divergent from the majority of Catholics. It's compared to being cult-like and extremists like some religions in the Middle East and Asia. So this is a very extreme religion. And what bothers me about that as a Christian is that when people abuse uh Christianity, they often not only cherry pick from the Bible, they misinterpret and lie by omission by taking out parts that would have explained something a little better. So what I can say to him as a Christian is if if you're using this to oppress the people or hold them down, you're not walking with Jesus. If you are using the religion, if you're more obsessed with the religious rituals and practices than you are with the word of Jesus, you're not walking with Jesus. And if you're using it for the judgment of others and as a weapon to beat people down, you're also not walking with Jesus. So I would really encourage him, really encourage him to find the best parts of faith and not diverge into extremists. But, 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 but and this is... This is weird. This is his belief system. If there are many Catholics who are staunch this way and don't, I'm just a saying, small, I'm small just, percentage listen, believe I'm in the Latin mass. It, 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 I'm just telling you, there are many people who believe this way. Weird. And I'm simply saying, rather than write a petition to get him fired because don't this is fired. Well, yeah. that's what I'm. That's well, what I'm talking about. I, just so you know, in the Catholic Church, the Pope diver- but diverges it from this belief. It does. <laughs> I mean, you guys, congratulations, universe, you win. Whoopi Goldberg is defending us from wow. a, like a white Christian lady. What What the hell? This is exactly why St. Paul doesn't permit women to teach in the church. She sounds like a Protestant female pastor. She does. <laughs> <laughs> Cherry pick. We don't do that. Uh, interpret. Uh, Catholics, we also don't do that. <laughs> That's your whole religion. Your whole That's 500 years. Religion is cherry picking scripture, and and you're literally cherry picking scripture to get around the undeniable truth that this man Harrison Butker has just uttered. Um, <laughs> what do you think? Well, yeah, listen to the language used. It's oppression, and it's putting women down to say that 
motherhood and family and marriage is women's primary vocation. The feminism is so baked into the outlook there that she doesn't even really see it anymore. It's the presupposition that Tim was describing a moment ago. Yeah, if, like the... if, if, if it makes women feel bad, then it has to be false. Sorry, Mike. No, 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 I was just going to say, I mean, it's it's the boiling frog analogy, right? You just put it in the water and you slowly turn the heat up and soon it doesn't know it's it's, it's being boiled. This is exactly what it is. It's pure indoctrination. Listen, I, I can say, even for myself, as of three years ago, when we were living in the, the other city we were living in, uh, just after we got married, I didn't realize how much I had been indoctrinated by feminism with this, like, we got to share the expenses, we got to go 50-50, you've got to have a career and all this stuff. You don't realize how uh uh you know pervasive this stuff is from a young age you're brought up with this idea and most people just have no clue because most people aren't critical thinkers and not willing to challenge their own worldview i mean it was shortly thereafter that i realized okay this is actually an inversion of god's order completely this is not i'm not i shouldn't be putting that responsibility on her but i mean i have some degree of of, of grace and sympathy um it makes me angry but i understand it because dude i was kind of there as of a few years ago i wasn't that based unfortunately. Well, we shouldn't be surprised, though, that Tim's saying, go even higher than Ripage's 80%, say 98% yeah. of households, even trad households are infected by feminism. Because there's a sense in which given our fallen nature, disorder comes easily, like vice comes pretty easily to us. We just tend that way. And Adam and Eve are the first feminist couple. Yep. And it's not that you suddenly become based, and then you can forget about feminism forevermore. I'm aware now of all kinds of feminist assumptions and behaviors that I had as a result of growing up in an environment where they were just normal and unquestioned. But even despite being aware of them, you still have to be careful to actually keep them in check day to day. Like, oh, dude, St. Augustine talks about um, sin being almost like a second nature to us, the languor of nature. So it doesn't actually befit our rational nature. It's not how human beings are supposed to live. But nevertheless, it's how we do live. And we have those habits that are baked into us because of the fall. So I'm not surprised it's 98% of households. Of course it is. Yeah. Sin makes you stupid. Father Ripperger, I think, also said that. Darkens the intellect. And so, and this is a problem, right? It's, it's a lack of active leadership in the home. Every day that a man wakes up, and most men aren't aware of this, uh, he's kind of has to. He, he starts at zero again. You got to still make all the decisions. You got to make the calls. You got to keep your cool. Uh, you got to, you know, tick off all the boxes of providing for your family, not just in uh, financial within financial provision, but spiritual provision as well, and keeping your household in check. Much like a CEO that has a bunch of employees that are running amok, yeah, it might not be his fault, but it's his responsibility because they're doing it on his watch. And right. so I can. It's our nature to be like Adam in the sense that, you know, he just watched Eve get deceived and didn't really do anything about it. It's very easy to slip into the mindset of, okay, well, whatever you feel like, babe. And that is a slippery slope backwards. That kind of laziness produces, um, I mean, it, it just, it handcuffs a man in his ability to lead properly. I've seen it in my home. So every morning I wake up with this, 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 this intention that, all right, I'm at zero again. I got to keep my ship right. I got to keep it headed in the right direction. And that's a hard thing to do. Saying no, making the right calls, that's heavy as the head that wears the crown. Well, it, is, it, it involves the humility to actually have that almost mistrust of yourself and think, could easily be me. Like you hear this, yeah, some of the yeah. stuff in Jordan Peterson's lectures is gobbledygook waffle, but he does say stuff like people studying Nazi Germany and thinking, oh, I would never have done any of that bad stuff. Yeah. You probably would have done. Like you share the same deep flaws as the worst people who did the worst things. And you need to have the humility to recognize there, but for the grace of God, go I. And there's that constant feminist threat to the family as well that we all have to face. And Tim, I think this is at the root of the reaction we're talking about right now, because I've noticed that some of the stuff that you tweet about and the reaction you get from people who think of themselves as being, um, super trad, running their households perfectly, then it turns out actually that they've got some feminist habits. People don't like to hear it. They don't like to be reminded of it because it's painful. 
I mean, look at my reception in the trad Catholic world versus Eric Sam. Uh, sorry, Eric Sammons is one of the touchstones versus Butkers. Everyone, now that it's become kind of cool, I saw Archbishop Cordelioni of San Francisco, who's like barely right of center, supporting Butker. And, and everyone's supporting this one issue. They're not just talking about the other five or six issues. They're talking about this most extreme feminist issue. Think of me and Steph. Or, I mean, you guys are included in this small cadre as well. It's like, wait a minute, what? I was, uh, I was not only... You were thrown out of Eton College in Great Britain, which is obviously very progressive, uh, well, but I have been sort of ushered quietly out of polite society, even among the normie trads. Trads like to think of themselves as never being normie, but in America, it's a big enough movement, traditionalism, that they are normies. And they're offended by feminism, like you say. And so I'm sitting here w looking at the fallout of the butt curve benedictine speech all week and i'm like this guy uh condemned me when when meg remember megha on twitter said you know w women should change their baby's diapers shouldn't have their their husbands do it that created something me and nick called diaper gate and it and um a lot of the people that were attacking megha on diaper gate are like yeah butker's right women need, need to be at home we're we're perplexed i i, I would just say we're perplexed. Again, I think this is all also another symptom of the absconding father too, right? We all have daughters and you can really see, you know, I have two little girls. I'm looking at them like, what is their future going to look like? And a part of you, your, your flesh wants to say, yeah, you be, go be self-sufficient. You be independent. Go get that job. Go live on your own. You know, you want to you want to raise them like a boy, and you don't you don't realize that 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 inclination is a, is a that your sin nature playing out in a different way. It's a different manifestation of that sin nature. You know, I I had a tweet that went viral where I said my my daughters will go from under my roof to under the roof of their husbands, and it went absolutely insane. It ended up on these two huge subreddits. People were calling me all sorts of just horrific things. But I, I still hold to that ten toes down. That's what's going to happen. Um, but you could, I mean, you guys have daughters. Had, has this thought ever entered your mind early on in their life? They're like, yeah, you know, not that you actually want them to do that, but the thought of them being under another man's rule almost made you a little bit uncomfortable. And, and, and men, instead of going into that discomfort and understanding why they made them, makes them uncomfortable and, and understanding that it's just their sin nature. Um, it, it's a hard one to navigate. You know, I've been there now. I'm, go ahead. I, well, I was just going to say, I don't, I, I'm interested to hear how you respond to Mike's question, Will, but I've been awake long enough now, um, as it were, to be like, no, I just, I'm a good judge of character. I like, I've always gotten well, gotten along well with young men. I made friends with a lot of my young um, high school students who are friends like Nick's age now. And I, I, am really close with my daughters. So I just trust now I'm, I'm really eager for them to not have to go through the bullshit, the, um, the, the stress of getting into good colleges, going to colleges and dealing with the filth at the dorms. If, if one or two of them wants to go and that's the way they're going to get their MRS degree, then fine. But I'm really eager for them to just meet a good young man when they're, you know, of dating age, 17, 18 and, getting married it doesn't make me uncomfortable at all i know i'll i'll like the young men that they choose and and come to love them as uh sons what about you well yeah my eldest is 18 so we're going through that now and because of the cultural pressure that it's going to be college or university here and then career and then maybe marriage in late 20s at the earliest maybe kids after a few years, early 30s. That's how most people see it. That's the default assumption in all conversations, what's happening next. And to actually just stand firm and say, no, we're not doing that because I know that doesn't lead anywhere good. It's pretty much just a decade of uh, pain and abuse and mortal sin if you fall into that. That's not what any loving father should want for his daughter. And you need to have the clarity and sense of direction to say that we're taking a different path. I get some moments of doubt sometimes just because you're thinking, oh, hold on. Yeah. So it really is about her having to find a, a good guy that she can depend on to protect her and provide for her after 
she moves away from me. It is a frightening thought, but then you just have to think she's a good judge of character. She's got that discernment. And what is the alternative? Really? Yeah, and just to be clear to the CMask viewers too, I am no longer uncomfortable with this. I don't know if I made that clear enough. <laughs> you did. I want to. Yeah, 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 good. I I want exactly what you guys want. It's obviously to those that are not discerning, you can see where the discomfort is, and that's where you know men tend to slip into uh, that complacent uh, feminism. But mm -hmm. you guys, hundred percent agree. The I think what okay. So what Harrison didn't say here. So so he watched um. When we spoke, I think on Monday or Tuesday, he watched the twelve-minute extended sizzle of what a woman is. Our, 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 me and me and Nick's documentary. You both will feature in, and he's like, "Wow!" I thought I thought he'd seen it before that, but he's like, "Wow!" His his you know, business partners is you know watched it last night or something, and he's like, "Wow, okay, wow." There's a lot here, and yeah, my my speech reflects a lot of this. Tim, I know your work. Um, what I think. Where the speech ruffled all these feathers and yet didn't even address, and it would have ruffled more feathers if it had addressed, was this. The problem now is more with women than men. The problem now is more with women saying non serviam to their husbands than their kids even. So Harrison mainly focused on, well, careers get in the way of raising children, right? And and he he still he said it in an anecdotal way. He didn't lay down the duty of a wife as according to Catholic teaching. I'm about to read those to you. Um, whenever you come across the duties of wives to, broadly speaking, the duties of wives according to Catholic teaching. They're to husbands first. And so I think if Harrison had included, it was a great speech, greatest commencement speech of all time, but he could have ruffled feathers 10 times more, right? Like a thousand percent than compared to what he did. If he would have just said, okay, the duties of a wife are to kids, yeah. But then if you focus on this, then it's like, oh, your wife can work before and after your kids are kindergarten age, work out of the home we're talking you know, that's not the Catholic teaching. The Catholic teaching is her duty is to her husband from the day she gets married. Uh, um, let me just read this section of the catechism to you. We have a catechetical teaching called the duties of a wife. To train their children in the practice of virtue and to pay particular attention to their domestic concerns should also be special objects of their attention. The wife should love to remain at home unless compelled by necessity to go out. You can go out, ladies, if there's like an axe-wielding maniac. You should love to be at home. If you don't, there's something disordered there. You need to retrain your habits to love to be at home. If you're getting stir-crazy in the home, go outside for an hour and garden. But you don't need to even run to Target. I know a lot of guys' wives that are stay-at-home wives will run to Target like eight times a week because they're like, I just I kind of get stir-crazy in the home. There's something wrong with your habits. You should love, I'm just quoting Catholic teaching now. Trent Horn laughed at it when we were debating. He laughed at me for quoting the Roman catechism. The wife should love to remain at home unless compelled by necessity to go out. That's the only reason she should really be getting the itch to go abroad, meaning go around society. Women are not supposed to be going around society. That's all you see when you go to the store or whatever. That's not what Catholic teaching says. And the wife should never presume to leave home without her husband's consent. Trent really laughed at me for quoting that. Again, and this is really big, in this, the, the conjugal union chiefly consists, this means this is the primary glue that keeps weddings together, marriages together. Let wives never forget that next to God, they are to love their husbands. It doesn't say kids, it says husbands. To esteem their husbands above all others, yielding to them in all things not inconsistent with Christian piety, a willing and ready obedience. This is just two paragraphs in the Roman Catechism. And how much more would it have pissed this crowd off? Whoever the blonde bimbo is on The View that Whoopi Goldberg was admonishing, 
if if Harrison had just read these two paragraphs, it wouldn't have been as nice a speech. But isn't this more extreme, the basic Catholic teaching, than even what Harrison said, uh, Mike and Will? Definitely not as uh, flowery, uh, the language used in, in the catechism. What section of the catechism is that in? Um, so this is Roman catechism. It's uh, on matrimony. Uh, it's it's kind of low in the section on matrimony. You have to look down. Um, there's duties of a husband and duties of a wife. And both of them reaffirm, this is one of the things I debated with Trent Horn, that both the duties and rights, which are mutually constitutive, unless you're a modernist, the duties and rights of husband and wife are different. We don't have the same rights. And I want to I want to read some some papal quotations to you guys when we get a chance. Uh, did, did you have anything else to add to that, Mike? No, it's just it, it's clear that it's not just obviously the uh, uh, traditional crowd that adheres to this or should adhere to this because this is the catechism in general. So that blonde lady pastor lady has no idea what she's talking about no she doesn't <laughs> it, it mentions the o word obedience willing and ready obedience and that is what feminism can't stand above all with the Bubble. seneca falls convention 1848 right tim and Correct. it is saying that the number one thing that we want to overthrow is wifely obedience. So whenever you bring that up, you're at the crux of the matter. His speech didn't. It implied that the wife has more important duties in the home compared to outside the home in the male arena of the public space and careers. And that was enough, even just implying that there's something about the home that really makes it the woman's place. But if he'd gone further and just read out that sentence about willing and ready obedience, then that would have blown it up even more. He implied it by way of an anti an anecdote, uh, not an antidote, uh, a personal story. He's like, look, I'm sure you ladies are way more excited about families than careers. And it's like, uh, it is his tongue planted in his cheek when he said that? If so, that's a good use of rhetoric because these are young career women that have been brainwashed, psyoped, into what do you want to do, ladies? Do you want to be a, a NFL linebacker, to use Will's joke, or a firefighter, or a mathematician? Women aren't good at any of that. They're not meant to be good at any of that. And if um, have you stopped beating your wife lately? If you ask a loaded question, you're going to get a loaded answer, which is why loaded question askers ask loaded questions. They start brainwashing young girls. What do you want to be when you grow up? Do you want to be a NASA astronaut? Do you want to be a WNBA player? Do you want what, what? What? You can answer anything you want, that aside from the thing that's the true answer. This is why we need the church because what happens is you get so Ephesians five twenty one submit to one another out of reverence for Christ and and all the feminists are like see see when and it's in the catechism it's clearly spelt out I can read between the lines so can you guys that there is a difference in that what submission looks like from a man to a woman from a woman to a man. And it's spelled out in Ephesians too. If you can actually, like, if you read it and you actually try to understand it with your spirit, that yeah, wives submit in a certain way and men submit in different ways. It is not the same thing and negates our God given differences. Would you say that as well? The cat, the catechism is just, it spells it out so perfectly for me. Yes, the, it's like the, the mutual submission, yes, but no. <laughs> no, well, mutual submission implies in the, in the same order. Where, you right. know, there are four senses of scripture, there's an analogical and an anagogical, as well as a historical sense. So if you say that men and women submit mutually, which is a word that never appears in Ephesians, yep. it directly implies, as directly as one can imply, that they are uh, submitting men to women, women to men in the same sense. Whereas women literally and historically must submit in all things to their husband. Husbands literally only submit their life in situations where life is demanded. You lay down your life for your wife. That is an analogical submission. So it's a direct lie and the word mutual is never used. But um, I, I just... In addition to to the catechetical teaching, in, unless either of you had anything to add to that, I would also just say um, this because I I know again I'm 
one of the oest OGs on this patriarchy topic. And I know all the tricks. The main, it's not even a trick. The main defense of Harrison by good Catholic girls who aren't particularly based on Twitter that I've seen, I've seen it a thousand times in the last three days is they'll just say, he wasn't saying that I couldn't have a career. He was saying mothering is more important than a career and you can do both like the Megan Kelly and Harrison actually wasn't saying that he, he, he was indirectly implying those guys, Tim Gordon, Will Nolan, they were right. Um, and, and again, he knows our work, but he did it with an anecdote. So at it, some level, it's a reader response sort of critical theory where it's like anyone can take whatever they want. So you see young Catholic, and this is what's vexing about the disparity in response to Harrison versus the disparity of response to my book or Steph's book. Um, you see young unbased Catholic girls being way more amenable to Harrison, which I'm, I'm glad that they are, but it's only because of the way that they're receiving it. Whereas if Harrison had just come out and said, the 20th century popes all affirm these ancient teachings of St. Paul in scripture, you know, everyone knows the eight or nine places in, in scripture that you, you, Nick, and myself are always like, there's no doubt here. Feminism is evil. Women have to submit to men. The common response will be, what about the 20th century popes? That's just a cultural moment in the Bible. Okay, here are 20th century popes, beginning with the first pontificate that began in the 20th century, Pius X. It is a mistake to maintain that women's rights are the same as man's. Women in war or parliament are outside their proper sphere, and their position there would be the desperation and ruin of society. <laughs> Women created as man's companion must so remain, always under his power. Patriarchy. Uh, responses to that. <laughs> Does anyway? I mean, it's like a mic drop. I have other papal quotes from the 20th century, if, if you guys don't have much, but well, feel free part to of respond the, to that. Oh, sorry, Tim. Part of the feminist lie is, 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 is just like some of those women that took Butker's speech and said, well, we can be mothers and we can have these careers. Well, that is the almost at the core of the feminist lie itself because yes we know they cannot take on all of that at once you can't be the boss babe career woman megan kelly type and be a nurturing uh loving mother and wife so they're fed this load of garbage and then when they quickly burn out and they're horrible wives horrible mothers or they just don't have kids in general and they reach the age where they're like in their 30s and 40s and realize this this lie they've been sold that is at like the the core of what feminism is is that you can do it all you could not only can you be a woman, but you can also be a man. Right. Horrible that, mothers, horrible wives, and horrible workers in the workplace. To do that's it. Two things when you only have the capacity for one is to do both things horribly. Sorry, you're a well. factotum. You're a jack of all trades, master of zero. Right. There's um there's the point here as well that this isn't even something that we need Christian revelation to be able to figure out. Aristotle just put it really bluntly and said the relation of man to woman is ruler to rule. And you can just tell this from natural law by looking around you without needing revelation. Even what E. Michael Jones described as the degenerate moderns themselves recognized it. In his book, Degenerate Moderns, he's got a whole chapter on Margaret Mead, who was an anthropologist who went around looking at Samoans, and other primitive cultures trying to find evidence of premarital sex, basically to say, hey, look, it's natural. This justifies what the bourgeoisie are doing. Of course, we want to behave this way because it's how we're supposed to. Um, even she wrote the following. Women may be said to be mothers unless they are taught to deny their childbearing qualities. Society must distort their sense of themselves, pervert their inherent growth patterns, perpetuate a series of learning outrages on them. So even a degenerate modern can recognize that women are destined to be mothers. That's their inherent growth pattern. It's like the, the telos or the essence of what is it that makes someone a woman? It's the potential for pregnancy. Like a man doesn't have that. 
but the woman does. Man has the potential for fatherhood. Woman has the potential for motherhood. To get someone to see themselves as a woman in any other way involves lying to them. That's the learning outrage. And it has been perpetuated on women. Yes. And that then that's why this is the biggest story of the year so far. And that's why the story needs to be pushed. Did you call it a learning outrage? Uh, uh well, yeah, Margaret I, Mead's I quote that. is um, I love that distort their sense of themselves, pervert their inherent growth patterns. You know, you're you're supposed to be a boss babe who's sterile. That that's a perversion of the inherent yeah. growth pattern, and then perpetuate a series of learning outrages on them. And wow. that's basically why homeschooling is a, a good idea because it avoids the learning outrages. And the yes. parent is supposed to be the primary educator. Even if your kids do go to school, my kids are in a mixture of both. We've done some homeschooling, also some small rural schools I know are pretty good. I'm always going to be the primary educator, though, whether they're at home or in a little school, which I know is a good environment. You as the parent are still the one who has to form them morally. You can't offload that even to a teacher that you trust you should you should tweet out that margaret mead quote well and i'll, I'll retweet it that that thing is amazing that's amazing i've never i don't think i've ever heard that one can i not can even I, christian uh, yeah not even christian no you keep bringing it back to natural law and that's what it's about i, I mean the church is on board with natural law here sometimes the church adds to the natural law yeah it's not What's going on with intersexual with the church's teaching on intersexuality? Listen to Benedict 15. I'm going through every pope of the 20th century, gents. That remember they say, oh, 20th century popes would never uh bulwark what scripture says. Wrong. Here's Benedict 15, the second full papacy of the 20th century. With religion's decline, cultured women have lost their sense of shame along with their piety. Many, in order to take up tasks ill-befitting their sex, going to the workplace, took to imitating men, gender dysphoria, original gender dysphoria, feminism. Others abandoned the duties of wives for which they were formed to be cast into the current of life. Hmm. Hmm. That's, that's interesting. Well, what, I wonder what that means. Here's Pius XI. He's talking about wifely work outside the home. Wives are work uh, allowed to work inside the home or in the curtilage, the area immediately around the home for, for farmers' wives. But wifely work outside the home is the debasing of the womanly character and the dignity of motherhood of the whole family. Really, this begins with the, uh, the husband. As a result of which, the husband suffers the loss of his wife the kids of their mother, and the home and the family of an ever-watchful guardian. This is what I said to Trent Horn we debated almost five years ago. He said, hmm, huh, it, it takes some pluck for two men at the time, me and my brother, to be writing a book against feminism. I said, that's weird. In the adversarial system of law, we expect the party whose rights have been transgressed to be plaintiff. You didn't expect the... He's like, it's just... Um, me and my feminist buddies over at Catholic Answers, we think you should you should write the book with a female to attack feminism. No, why? It's male rights that have been trampled. So it should be a male to write the book. That's just your adversarial system at law. You're going to represent your own self-interest best. And who is the plaintiff party that Pius XI names here first, as a result of which the husband suffers the loss of his wife, the kids of their mothers? Uh, um even in Harrison's great, excellent speech, he was only comfortable saying children. That's, that's yeah, the feminists are raging all week long, but they'd be raging 10 times more if he said, forget kids. The main job in the duty of wives in the catechism is above all, above, aside from God, above all others, including her kids, she should look up to her husband and serve her husband. So that's actually, you want to go to 11? I, I realize the tensity has been dialed to 10. You want to go to 11, Mike? Then you just take um, um, Pius XI at his word here. What do, you, what do you say about this? Well, Harrison was just plainly saying to women, don't be spiritually a transformer. You know what I mean by transformer. Essentially, anybody yep. that has any sort of feminist leading is a spiritual transformer. It's what you're seeing in society as a whole. 
and what you're seeing played out in, in feminism, it's clear as day. People don't realize it, but it's absolutely transformerism. Um, and it's a cancer that's eating away at the family uh, unit. I think, I mean, dysphoric. it was, it was, it was it's, it's completely dysphoric. Yeah. I like, I, I don't think, I don't think that's in the YouTube algo searches. So I, and I like, I like it cause I go gen, uh, functional dysphoria, gender dysphoria. That's my name for feminism. Ontological gender dysphoria. That's the transformerism. Um, listen to this further. Uh, Will react to this other Pius the Eleventh quote: "This false liberty and unnatural equality with the husband is to the detriment of the woman herself. For if the woman descends from her regal throne, Christian home." She will soon be reduced to the old state of slavery and become, as among the pagans, a mere instrument of man. Think me too. Wow. Women are shocked that they try to be in the actresses, actrixes, and they're they're <laughs> getting sexually harassed. HR departments exist only because women enter the workplace and we're getting sexually harassed, just as Pius XI said. What do you what do you think of that, Will? Yeah, I was gonna make that point, but it's good that he's made it anyway. Feminism isn't just a violation of the rights of men and your point about a man being the plaintiff is spot on but it's also a violation of the rights of women too and kids it's just bad for everyone because like mike was saying it undermines the fabric of the family so i want to come back to the bit you read out previously which is that when a man has a wife who works outside the home he actually suffers the loss of his wife. Like, let that sink in. People who are listening who are in that situation. There's a sense in which if your wife works outside the home, you don't truly have a wife in the sense in which you should because you're not being prioritized. She's not able to be the heart of the home in the way that your family needs her to be. That's the reason why when Tim makes these points on Twitter or when we talk about it here, that shrieking reaction comes in because people don't want to order their lives around that fact. They'd rather just rest in complacency and the disorder, which is easier in some ways because guys want to have the tiny bit of extra disposable income that comes from having a wife who works. They don't want the extra pressure put on themselves that would be involved by them actually saying, no, sole income, we're going to live more frugally. Your careerism is going to die alongside your feminism. That takes more fortitude to face and fix, and they would rather not do it. Well, you see it with a lot of guys too, right? They 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 want the authority of being the man of the home while still letting their wives leave the home. How many guys come through my coaching program? As, as, as I'm sure they do with you, Will. And there's this dynamic. They want those creature comforts. They don't want to, you know, uh, fleece their lifestyle down to something that's, you know, more manageable for him. Um, and he doesn't want to work more. That's usually, there's a bit of laziness there too. Uh, but I'm I'm not the man of my house. She doesn't submit to me. Um, why should she? Why would she? How can she? Yeah, the, the relationship between prostitute and pimp is only solidified through the violence of the pimp. And um, sorry, men with working wives, but my, my brother, Dave, has, uh, you, you might not, you might, disagree with my brother dave he might say things in an impolitic way you might not like him but he has he has a, a great way of cutting through the bullshit sometimes he says if you let your wife work you are pimping her out mm -hmm. and with with a pimp and the prostitute they have that horrible 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 relation I mean, abusive physically abusive relationship that's what keeps that um rapport in check well, with a husband and his wife who wants his cake and to eat it too, as as Mike, you just described, he wants to still be boss, but he's saying, well, you know, he's pimping her out to another boss. Literally, he, this guy gives you money. He gives us money. He lines our pockets, honey, yours and mine. So you have this other male boss uh, in all these cases. It's like, well, that guy's just dysphoric in the sense that he has cognitive dissonance. He wants to be the boss, and yet he's like sharing his wife. It's like it's like um, it's like a form of polyamory when is, when a yeah. man wife work. It it's really is. It's spiritual swinging. Spiritual swinging. We're coining all these new terms here, guys. <laughs> we are, and you are, and she's yeah, spiritual swinging. She is submitting to her boss, and you want the authority. It's kind of like wearing a suit top, but wearing a dress on your bottom. That's what these guys are. That's what it they're is. doing. <laughs> it, it it's tied up with contraception as well. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. Now, let me try and articulate this. There's um, Kogan's Catechism for Adults. Um, for new, new Converts, I think it's called. I'll look it up. But he makes a good point that the um, a, a wife doesn't have a duty to have sex with her husband. And there's a very small number of cases where that applies. One of them is where the husband can't provide materially or refuses to provide materially for any children that might result. So let's say that he's just um, saying, I'm never going to get a job. Like, I'm I'm not going to provide for you. I just, not, I just won't do it. Then she doesn't have a duty to have sex with him because he's violating the right that the kids have to be provided for by him as their father. Now, I'm wondering whether with the contraceptive mentality, which reduces the wife to like a mere instrument of man in that quote that Tim was reading earlier, just a sexual play thing. Uh, the husband basically gets to say, I want all these privileges. I want you to behave this way towards me, but I'm not actually going to do my duties. I won't be fulfilling the role that I'm supposed to. That's degrading for the wife as well. Exactly. It is. It is. Great comparison. And the funny thing is all of the feminists who got mad at what Harrison's saying, they're fleshing out the natural entailment of what we're saying better. They're kind of racing to the end. They're end running. They're like, wait a minute. Then that would be like, if you believe what Harrison's saying, then really you're basically pimping out your wife is what, what these Catholics believe. And you can't, and, and they're also saying that a woman can't do two jobs at once and that a man is sleazy for even letting his wife work and that the wife who's working is being sleazy and that it's all economically driven and that the, she's a bad wife and he's a bad husband. And we're like, yep. And you know, once again, the people that, have cognitive dissonance about this are not those feminists. It's the moderates that will will like cheer for Harrison Butker, but boo for this a show like this show that 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 really fleshes it all out. You see what I'm saying? Seeing the weird paradox there. Well, it's it's just lukewarm, right? Lukewarm belief, no lukewarm. conviction, fence fence sitting. We talked about it before, right? I mean. Jesus spits those type of people out of his mouth, and they don't realize that Satan built that fence they're sitting on, anyways. It's a that's a that I have more respect for the staunch feminists and liberals. At least they planted a flag on on on, on a certain playing field. Okay, good. I I I have respect for the atheists. It's like, nope, I don't believe in God. God doesn't exist. Okay, at least you're on a side. If you're spiritually right. agnostic, I can't take you seriously. I don't respect you. At the no, and that's most Catholics. That's a yeah. that's a lot of the Catholics cheering for Harrison on social media. Yeah. I'm glad he's not getting hate. I want him to get support, but it's, it's support from the lukewarm. So I I'm, so I I'm ambivalent towards it. Let me, let me read out a few more of the 20th century quotes. If you guys want to say anything, just jump in. Don't feel obligated to, this is also Pius the 11th. It just, they should all be grouped together in one show. Pius the 11th to abuse the years of childhood. Now this one, you kind of have heard um intoned over the last week to abuse the years of childhood and limited strength of women is grossly wrong mothers should work in the home or its immediate vicinity that's what i'm always teaching it is an intolerable abuse to be abolished at all cost for mothers to be forced to engage in gainful occupations outside the home trent didn't like that one when i read it and then same Pius XI, he, he's full of these. Communism is characterized by the rejection of any link that binds woman to the family and the home, and her emancipation is claimed as a basic principle. She is withdrawn from the family and care of the kids. The care of the home and the kids then devolves upon the collectivity. That's, that's, uh, that's what they really wanted. Here's Pius the Twelfth, the next Pius. Has woman's position been thereby improved he's talking about after women's rights which really began in 1848 equality of rights with man brought her abandonment of the home where she reigned queen big theme with the piouses she re reigns queen at home and her subjection to the same work strain in hours entailing depreciation of her true dignity and the solid foundation of her rights her feminine role remember um, Pope Francis and others talk about dignity as if it's leaving the workplace and providing economically and being sexualized and fetishized for being a boss babe. Pius XII says the exact opposite, teaching with true Catholic teaching. Her dignity is preserved at home and it is outstripped when she goes to 
out to strip or whatever. Well, he also says, we see a woman who, in order to augment her husband's earnings, betakes herself to a factory, leaving her house abandoned during her absence. The house, untidy and small perhaps before, becomes even more miserable for her lack of care. Isn't that a banger? Here's Vatican II, Gaudium at Space. Oh, Vatican II is a liberal council, right? Uh, not on intersexuality. This is Gaudium at Space. The kids, especially the younger ones, need the care of their mothers at home. This domestic role must be safely preserved, though the legitimate social progress of women should not be underrated. See, there's the there's the, the fake and Skittles part. Uh, we don't know what the legitimate social progress of women is. None of it's really legitimate. Here's even liberal, maybe communist, maybe, you know, people people accused him of being a homo sapien when he first came into the pontificate, Pope Paul VI. Even in the glorified state, this is Will's big point, even in the glorified state, in humans, the difference of sex exercises an important influence much deeper than ethnic differences. Now, he does acknowledge ethnic differences matter a little bit. He doesn't say it's nothing. He says it's a little. He's just saying that the difference between man and woman is a much bigger influence on human person, human identity. The latter do not affect the human as intimately as the difference of sex. The effect of God's will from the beginning. Male and female, he created them. And because he created us male and female, it's a much bigger part of our personality. Are you male or female? Then are you white? Are you Hispanic? Like that's a very small sort of ex post condition on our identity or our individual personality or temperament. Whereas a huge one, the first big question, this person said this, if, if you're trying to abstract a person said this about you go, well, is it a man or a female? I'm trying to get an image here, you know, in 20 questions, it's always first. I'll close with John Paul II, who's known as the feminist Pope rightly. Cause he said a lot of really fruity stuff. Um, in uh, his letter to women and uh, love and responsibility. They're horrible, horrible texts. But even probably the most feminist pope ever, JP2, said this, having to abandon wifely tasks in order to take up paid work outside the home is wrong from the point of view of the good of society and of the family when it contradicts or hinders these primary goals of the mission of a mother. Well, that's all the time when it does so. Um Okay, so so you guys can react to any or all of those, and I know we have to finish up. I just, I wanted to get them all out uh, in one show. What's sad and what's clear to me, the part of my heart grieves this whole thing because a lot of the promises that women are 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 you know sold through feminism, truthfully, are fulfilled in the home and in their God given roles. This like liberation, this freedom. Um, yeah this you know everything all, all that that nice package that they feed them when on the inside it's just feces it truthfully is fulfilled in their roles as 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 wives and as mothers and seeing this level of confusion and brainwashing is 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 it's hard to see it so that's why i didn't have a really huge reaction to what butker said because this is just normal and uh right. you know i'm i'm glad to be in this corner of the internet where we're talking about this i don't know if you guys feel that same kind of grief or tug on the heart where it's like you're sold a false bill of goods like it's so clear this is a satanic inversion many meant to get you out of the home so we, so the powers that be can destroy god's creation you know that marriage being that uh living uh embodiment of the christ and church relationship and then the children that flow uh from it that last that strength lasts generations it's what's got us to this point it's it's uh yeah it's it's just grieving to me man it's it, it's sad to see it it's fulfilled within those roles well, Period. that's a, that's I, a I feel it. spiritually mature response to it, Mike. And people should yeah. feel that way. Blessed uh, those who mourn. It's a spiritual tragedy. And the guys who like to hunt down videos of women crying alone in their cars because they've hit age 38, 39 with no man, no children, and no real satisfying future. And then just want to all get together and say, ha, ha, ha. Look at you. You've got what you deserve. There's your accountability. That's not a masculine thing to be doing. No. You should be sad. And St. John Chrysostom talks about the final stage of corruptness where men who, who were ordained as the leaders um, are now working against women as their enemies. That's like Satan's punchline. 
Yep. And if you're doing that, if you're pointing and laughing at the women who've been trashed in this way, then you're part of that plan. So you need to be able to actually mourn, like Mike says, and do what you can to try to reverse it in whatever small way you can in your own individual life. Because if we get guys who say, I can understand now that the family is the foundation and the most important thing I can do to stem the tide, maybe even reverse it a bit, is raise the next generation of boys and girls in a non-feminist, anti-feminist household. That's the great use of my life. Yeah. Man, speaking of emotionally mature, spiritually mature, those are, those are two great responses. It is a grief. That's It's the grief that's been visited upon society. No one should be surprised. Um, it uh, was the original sin, constitutive of the original sin. Feminism is at the, the core of all of the social justice uh, grievances. We're over target. No one else is. No one is as close to being over a target as that. You guys sounded so spiritually mature. I'm going to gloat. Um, you know, I'm going to take it the other direction. No one's no one's been over a target like this. And we've been up really early since since early. And, um, you know, that's why people come to watch CMAS to die. Either of you guys have have closing remarks. I, I as always, agree with 100 percent of everything that's been said here today. I don't I don't say that very often uh, anywhere else. Well, I, like I said, I'm I'm grateful to be here among you guys and guys like Harrison Butker. We may not we well, man doesn't sit in the the shade of the tree that he's planted, but it's important that we plant it anyways, and I think that's what we're doing. Um, so long live the patriarchy, and glory to Jesus Christ. I'm glad we this message needs to be shouted off from the rooftops. Right, and I want to bring people's attention back to that point that we made. Uh, there's no save button. Even if you listen to every CMASK episode so far, 10 times over, daily, there's still a battle against feminism in yourself that has to be fought. And that's never mm -hmm. going away. Well said. Amen. Yeah, I, I think I think between you two guys, Mike and Will, what's been said here today is um, incredibly insightful. It's a daily struggle. Um, we th th That everyone fell for feminism at some point man there's not guilt in it you know as long as you correct as soon as you're on constructive notice as the law refers to being notified of something that you, you didn't have a way of knowing about before man is the social animal there is no way to know before you know that you're swimming in dirty water you only know you're swimming in dirty water ex post once you can get out of the water and look in the tank holy cow i was swimming in that so None of us are gloating, but we are saying that to intone this whole debate summaratively as, well, it's all about kids is just wrong. It's really all about women being wise. The, 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 the vocation of lay women is as wives, and the telos of being a wife is having kids, but it's it's why you would say the formal cause is really being a wife, unless you're going to be a, a religious married woman. The telos of being a wife is having kids. But this this is why all those 20th century popes I read kept coming back to the idea of your highest duty is to your husband, even more than to your kids. That, you, you know, that would have been even more politically incorrect to say the true Catholic teaching, and I am trying to get the document and our documentary to Harrison and his team because they have the eyes and ears of the world now. And that's why I, I did two shows on this on my channel this week. This is like the third show I've done it on it. It's obviously shockingly important. It's always a little bit shocking to see our issue just go giga viral. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is our issue. So that's why people come here to see mask. Uh, God bless you both. My, Mike, did you have any closing statement or, or will? Are you, you guys both good? The point about working wives, not just working mothers is so important. I see yeah. countless guys who have kids and then with that extra stress that's applied to the marriage, the cracks in the foundation begin to widen and it wakes them up and they think something is wrong here. The household isn't rightly ordered. And it comes back to the fact so often that before kids, 
the wife was working outside the home. The foundations were wrong in the first place. That the calibration right at the beginning was not there. She didn't have the correct priorities. Neither did he. And then you discover that fully when the kids enter the picture. So if you're a young guy starting out, if you're engaged right now, if you just got married, listen to what Tim is saying there. Wives stay at home, not just mothers. Otherwise, you are starting off in the wrong direction and you'll pay for it later. And what I could say is I, in my, my own marriage used to be, my wife always, has always worked from home. So it was kind of those convenient two-in-one situations. That could be very complacent to those guys that are out there with a wife that works from home. Um, she's still technically working out of the home because she's not submitting completely to your authority. I used to be one of these guys. And what I can say is there's been a transformation in my home since she stopped doing that, since she's just entirely focused on her vocation as, as wife and mother. And not just have I seen a transformation within her and our home, which is incredible. It's made me a better man. You know, that kind of responsibility, that kind of authority, having that on my shoulders is a, it, it, it's, a, it's, there's a ton of pressure but there's a ton of glory in that pressure. And it's a process of really making you more like a saint, making you a lot more holy of a person. It's not meant to necessarily make you happy all the time. It's meant to make you holy. And that only comes from when your wife is doing what she should be doing as a wife and a mother, and you're taking care of her as such. Right. No pressure, no diamond. The comfort yeah. zone is gay. Men shouldn't be seeking <laughs> comfort. That's right. And... I, the last thing you're supposed to do in a paper or a book or an episode of a show is make a distinction right at the end. But holy cow, when you were speaking just there, Mike, I had a major breakthrough. People are always asking me prudentially to sort this through for them. Well, wait, so a wife can work in the home or in the curtilage. Can't this be abused? You know, what's the distinction? You summed it all up when you said, look, it's one thing for a, a wife to, to do hobby women should have hobbies um this is very jane austen it's very good for them to garden to do needlework to journal to write to paint watercolor if they can do these things that are hobbies and they're good enough at them to like sell their paintings at a farmer's market on saturdays and you, you both go and pick up some app a bushel of apples and try to say sell her painting and augment the household income that way great does she have a boss no <laughs> if she can play piano you know once once a month because she's really good at the piano at a little neighborhood outdoor concert or something i'm just spitballing as i go and everyone just you know it's like hey we'll we'll, we'll chip in 20 bucks and she makes a, a thousand bucks great does she have a boss no so if you have a talented wife with hobbies or, or she's a writer, people will ask this about, well, what about Steph's book? She she wrote that for women. Women are allowed to teach other women, says St. Paul. And again, writing is like journaling. This is something she can do from within the home. And she didn't have a boss besides me. That's the big tell. I'd never come to this. But if she's working from inside the home, yeah, technically Technically, you can kind of obey the catechism of Trent um, as long as it's inside the home, but you get into that polyamory, workplace polyamory, employment polyamory, for it to have any male boss but you or a female boss. But so I think I think we literally sorted out something just in the last five minutes that I've always sort of puzzled at. I'm like, yeah. yeah. Work inside the home or the curtilage as long as you're the only boss. And you can say, I don't want you to do that anymore this week. Yeah, we need to focus more on, you know, little Johnny or so, so and so is sick. Because if a woman's working even from inside the home, but she has to pull 40 hours or else, you know, be under strain and you lose that income, then then you're you're into the problem. So that right. would, last thing you want to do is make a distinction at the end, but no, I'm glad you made that point with the 40 hours, Tim, because the last thing we want is for someone to say, oh, OK, that means that she can have her uh, sales job with 40 hours of Zoom calls a week while the kids are with a nanny. That That's not the same thing. Right. And again, Which is what I say this my followers have done. So I've, I've heard them. I'm like, no, 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 no. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah. No, no. I was just going to say, I mean, we say this a lot, but I have never heard this distinction ever been talked about on a podcast before. So again, see mask. So based last five minutes, but that was a breakthrough guys. Listen closely. Listen to this one again.
<laughs> yeah, this is she a good can one. work inside the home and still be a feminist. <laughs> You're right. a feminist if you allow it. <laughs> she works inside the home and both of you wind up still feminist. Yeah, yeah, this is the tough one. You can do it. It should be very few hours and really it shouldn't be a boss aside from the man. That, that this is breakthrough even for me and um I'm the author of this. That's why that's why I like working with you two guys and Nick. The only guys I get breakthroughs on this most fundamental issue from are one of the three of you. I can there's, say that honestly. There's going to be some guy sitting there now rationalizing his wife like getting double his earnings thinking like, it's okay that's okay she's she's working inside the home and you know she might put in 30 40 more hours a week than me but i'm still trad i'm still trad right or maybe <laughs> she's part-time <laughs> <laughs> right hamster wheel go Holy spin <laughs> yes man All right. this is this is the issue of issues no, no one doubt that i've told you for five years this is the issue of issues this is the leftism beneath all leftisms. This is the sin beneath all sins. This is the original sin. This is why we have to suffer sickness and death. It was because Adam and Eve were feminists. Feminism is the original one. It is the original dysphoria. If you doubt that anymore, then you haven't been paying attention to the Harrison Bucker story. And, and, and would to God that you pay attention to it because this is our last throws um, as a civilization, Western civilization, England, Canada, America, feminism is what's done all of it, not race theory, not, not LGBT feminism. Desvold people. <laughs>